What's the difference between uh, worrying about our children and suffering from anxiety? So look, I think there are times that the two are going to go hand in hand. If you are predisposed to anxiety, I think having a child is the most beautiful recipe for that anxiety to come out floridly because you put pressure on yourself to be perfect. You put pressure on yourself for things to be in control, for nothing to go wrong. And then for other people, it's sort of general like day-to-day worries. You know, are they fed enough? Are they are they warm enough? And those worries don't become crippling. When the anxiety becomes so crippling that you find it hard to make decisions, that you experience symptoms of panic attacks, that you feel completely paralyzed by the fear of what could happen when you have racing thoughts about what if, what if, what if, then we're looking at more of an anxiety disorder picture. But day-to-day worries as a parent then come with the territory. Does an anxious mom make an anxious baby or child? You know, I think I think what you have to consider is that the mom, yes, yeah, she's the primary attachment figure, but she's not the only attachment figure in that child's life. And so anxiety can be a combination of both nature and nurture. And we have to take into account the the other people that play a significant role, the other events <laughs> that happen in a child's life that may not be within the mother's control. You know, you like you talk about you send your child to school. You let go of them in that moment and you have no control over what's going to happen in the playground or in the classroom. And so being a parent is hard. How can we help mom that thinks she's anxious to start understanding self and to start working on self, which which mm-hmm. is hard work in itself? Mm-hmm. Look, the first thing is, like I said, why something is happening or why we are feeling something is not as important is how are we going to tackle it? Am I able to look at myself with a level of compassion and say, right, this is all new to me. This beautiful little creature didn't come with a manual or a recipe book about do this and this and this, and no antenatal classes prepare you for real life. Mm -hmm. Am I able to surround myself with people that are going to be honest and simultaneously kind to me And am I able to take small moments where I can hold space for myself so that I am much more present for the space that I hold for my child or my children? I don't I don't believe in balance necessarily, right, Mm. because I'm juggling a lot. Um, And so what would your advice be to the mom that wants to create this balance on a daily basis? It doesn't exist. It's impossible. There are days that you are capable of working at 90% and only giving 10% to your children. And there are days where the, you know, the opposite is true. You have the capacity to be with your kids and only work 10%. And there are days where actually you feel like you cannot do any of it and you wish you could check out. Mm. It's all okay. It's all okay. We are not robots We feel, we think, we internalize, we are triggered. Sometimes we don't even know why we are triggered. I think the most important thing as parents and caregivers is can we have moments that are meaningful, where we are present, we are looking at our kids, we turned our devices off, we're turning away from them and actually turn towards our kids and actually show them that they are important and they matter. What advice do you have for this juggle of worrying and the feeling of sometimes giving up or even sometimes just going, oh, what the heck? Have a sense of humor. Not everything has to be serious or catastrophic all the time. You know, like I think about like taking my kids to school in the morning and I think very often we are often the last to walk through that gate. And the other parents that will walk in after us and then they'll go, damn, we know we're really late <laughs> because we've come in after you. Wow. <laughs> yeah. You know, so like you've got, you've got to laugh at it. I think also you also have to remember you're also raising little beings to be mm-hmm. accountable and to be responsible and that they've also got their own free will. 
So sometimes they may not want to study for the test or they think they've got it and it's okay. So in as much as we make allowances for them to make mistakes, mm-hmm. to grow from them, to learn to do things differently, can we not show ourselves the same? Because if we don't, then we're giving our kids mixed messages. So we have to sort of, we, we have to model that also within ourselves. Turning anxiety into action. Leanne, thanks for your time.